Hey everybody, welcome back to Retail Reptiles. My name is Garrett Hartle, and you've been sleeping under a rock if you haven't heard me talk about Blake Stewart over at Stewart Design yet. But, while you might have heard me talk about him before, I think tonight it's time to introduce you to the man, the myth, the legend, the support behind our channel as our sponsor. We want to check out his snake collection and see exactly what it is the Stewart design really does. Well, we're here, guys, with Blake Stewart, the sponsor of our channel. Ah, can we get some applause? These are a couple of the snakes that you've gotten from us at Reach Out Reptile. That's right. And so just so that everybody's clear, we're standing in front of like, you know, most of the time you don't show the construction side of the house, but in this case it's pertinent because you're building that for these. That's right. You guys ready for this? This is like no joke. I built my bedroom in high school, put three quarter inch everywhere. Yep. Literally so that I could screw sticks and stuff for my iguanas and stuff to climb around. So the, the, <laughs> the idea with the spray foam, obviously, because this is not a conditioned area, you know, there's no HVAC here and stuff. Right. right? So during the summer, I mean, it's going to stay really hot, you know, so it's no problem, you know, for them in the summer. Um, in the winter, if I still want to let them in here, I still want to see if the temperature is going to be good enough to let them in for a few hours or whatever stuff right. and crawl around and, and stuff. I'm having outlets put up top also and I figure I could have like a shelf put up here and I can have an electric heater oh, um, yeah. put up here also. Well those two by two LED panels yeah. um, you know that do all the warm light, cool light, yeah. colors, dim, all that kind of stuff, there's going to be six of those in here. Yeah. I didn't see how that works because that's... <laughs> so I there's going to be one, two, three, yeah. four, five, six. I'm, so I'm still have, on that for our shop. I will have a crazy, a crazy amount of light in here if I want it. But, but of course I can, you know, so for cleaning and things like that, but then I can always dim it down to, you know, practically nothing. Yeah, I was thinking about putting... Dude, uh, so, so much you could do with this room. It's like so much. What would you guys do with this room? Comment down below if you had this ridiculous insulated box sticking off the side of your house like Blake does. <laughs> how would you dress this up? Let's let's keep it specific. If you had Superdorf retics and this was the playroom, which is crazy by the 12 way. 12 by 12 playroom. Because nobody even gives a room this size to a mainland which is yeah. a shame, and you've got it for Dwarf and Super Doors. This is gonna be like their kingdom or whatever. <laughs> but if that's what you guys, if you guys had this, how would you set it up? You could have an elephant in here if the retakes yeah. don't work out. And then this goes right into- Pygmy Hippo, Pygmy Hippo Habitat. <laughs> this, this goes right into this room. Anyway, so, so this is like now uh, the, the outer corner of your house. Look at the view, by the way, from the snake room. Yeah. You can only get this in West Virginia or Western Pennsylvania. <laughs> I mean, so the snakes on. have some nice daylight, you know, we still have their, their cycle. And like literally a jungle outside. Yeah. <laughs> so you're going to get them chasing deer as they run. So by. these are the big pages. <laughs> uh, these are the six footers, uh, six feet by 30 inches deep uh, by 18 tall. Perfect. 30 inch depth, that's the magic. Six by eight, this is 18 by 30? Are these locked? No, 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 these are open. So, um, yeah, look at that. Shelves back this, all over. This is why 30, by the way. I got 36 on mine. Yeah. And when poor Rob has to clean it's the cages, to he does this. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 30 yeah. inches, even short guys like me, steps to that. Show the clip of that one kid climbing in there today, Elijah. Yeah, yeah, Elijah has to climb into our underwear. And I think it's cool to have some things for them to climb on too. So whether it's, you know, some Java wood or some <laughs> big tubes or just yeah. switch it up from time to time and stuff. Um, it's it's but, really anything that they have to basically do pull-ups on, right? They get up, pull over, keep that core strength yep. looking like yours and not like mine. <laughs> Ultimately, we keep reptiles because it improves our quality of life. Mm -hmm. Why and improve theirs? Exactly. And yeah. having animals like kept in like the dream situation is a major improvement, not on their life only, but mine too. It makes yeah. me more, like I can't wait, we'll have to come back and see this thing when it's done, but I can't wait to see it when it's done. And I bet that just you walking in that door is gonna be like, ah. And I know tons of people who put that much money and more into their collections, mm -hmm. but it's like, okay, now I have 120 snakes living in these. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Versus saying, like you said, I wanna have 10 snakes 
Yeah. And they're going to get to play in there. Well, talk about how snakes like to, I mean, actually, you know, enjoy moving around and climbing things and stuff like that. Do you want to get some outside before the daylight runs out? We can do that. This is a 50% Jampea that we produced in early 2019. So, it's about a year old. Look at that pack. Color is really coming in nice, dude. Look at those golds and silvers. Crazy. Yeah, he looks great. And then this one is actually, so this is a dwarf, yearling male. This is a super dwarf, sun tiger, three-year-old. Three -year -old. You wanna take these two out? Yeah, let's yeah. do that. Cool. Blake, Blake, I think, is the only guy who puts effort into potty training his snakes. Not, not exactly potty training, <laughs> but just taking them outside because, you know, giving them a little bit of exercise, letting them crawl around, they enjoy it, I think, but also it makes them go to the bathroom. So it means you don't have to clean the cages out as often. Now, how often do you do that, like specifically to take them? Because, I mean, your cages are immaculate and obviously having, you know, not having all the feces and everything and urates and stuff is a big benefit. But yeah. Well, I mean, you see you how much out? she likes crawling around and stuff. Um, I mean, she'll come out here, I mean, pretty much each day. Yeah. You know, whether it's every for... Every day. You oh, take yeah. them out every day. Every day, yeah, yeah. Wow. Wh whether it's for 10 minutes or if I'm sitting out here and the kids are playing and I let them crawl around for an hour. snakes together. I mean, honestly, it makes it super easy when you're cleaning the cages, uh, but also gives them some interaction, some time to crawl around something, you know, different than their cage. But this has got the, the screen, they can smell you, they can see you, yep. their, their heat pads, uh, heat pads, or heat pits, heat pits. can uh, register you, you know what I mean? What is that thing supposed to be, actually? It's like a uh, puppy playpen or something, I think. Uh, I bought it off of Amazon, it was like 15 bucks. I was thinking like world's largest laundry hamper. So so you're thinking about breeding these two this season, and this mm -hmm. is how you're just getting them acquainted. It's a little bit, she's not ready yet, right? But you're just doing this to kind of get them acquainted so that when the breeding introductions do happen, at least it's not like a shock. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Hopefully they'll be more comfortable with each other and you know make it more likely to walk up easier. It's a great idea. A lot of people with retics, uh, you know, I see this all the time, you know, and I know you're a big advocate of hook training and stuff too. And and I, and I think definitely for people that have a lot of them, hook training is a must, you know, you, you have to do that. Because when mm -hmm. they get big, I mean, they, they can, you know, obviously do some damage if they're hungry and so forth. She's not in food mode whatsoever. Um, I have separate containers that I'll put them in. And then when they're in that container, I'll feed them. So that is what triggers their food response. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, fi I find it to work. You know? No, I, I think that works really well too. Um, the, the only exception or problem that I've seen time and time again with that is if people get a brand new snake and they expect to be able to move it and then feed it. Uh, I mean, if you, like I'm just bringing you a snake yeah. right now. He's never been moved and then fed. So you throw them off. So they, I think they take a little bit of time, but yes. but the, the cool thing is there's as many different ways to keep a snake as snake owners. I mean, there's certain parameters. You got to get the right temperatures and humidity and things like that. But even those are debatable. Some people run one ambient and they're like, that's what you want. Some people give wide varieties. But, so the only problem I would say with removing them to feed them is that if you get a new snake and you expect it to do that right away and it doesn't eat because you freaked it out, that's really on you. No, you do have to get them used to it. I mean, when so I first when that? I first got the big tiger, uh, you know, girl from you, I mean, she would would not eat if I put her in a container. You okay. know, um, at first though, I mean, a whole new new cage, new setup. You know, she was nervous. First time that I fed her, um, I put her in, or tried to feed her. When I put her in the box, she wouldn't take it. Okay. Um, so when I put her in the cage um, in her enclosure, then she did take it. So. You know, after that time, um, you know, I had a lot of handling time with her, got her used to me, got her used to her, you know, cage and things like that. Then the next time when I put her in the box, she did take it right away. And now every single time, each week that I fed her, she takes it right out of the box. Now. So you didn't even have like a processor. I was expecting you to say, okay, so then I fed her in the cage, but as she was wrapping, I moved her in the tub or something. Nope. You just, you just did what she wanted to get the food and be comfortable and allow her to do it her way. Yeah. And then you tried it again your way the second time and... I think she just needed to get used to her environment and be a little more trusting in me and so forth. Especially, so. like, I mean, hatchling is one thing, they're pretty pliable in the mind, but yeah. an animal that's used to one thing, all exactly the same routine for three years, and then to have a change like that, 
I don't know, to me it shows a little bit of intelligence, you know? Yeah. Oh yeah, no, the snakes are definitely intelligent. I mean, but you can tell, I mean, you know, she's not at all any kind of, you know, food response. She's, you know, not at all head shy in any way whatsoever. This uh, is something I, I think a lot of people neglect doing is like, when you have that snake, a lot of messing times- with their- Yeah, and you were a bird guy for a while too. Mm-hmm. So you probably know what I'm talking about. like. You get somebody's bird that never touches it on the head, then you go to touch on the head, yep. it bites the dickens out of your finger. Yep. You know what exactly. I mean? Yeah. But if you hand raise that thing, you roll it over on its back, you squish it, you tickle it, mm-hmm. you know, you play with its beak. I used to always play with my bird's tongues, yeah. you know, and things like that, just so that they get used to like, many snakes are very tail shy. Tail They're shy sensitive on the, yeah, and head shy because mm-hmm. people don't touch them there. Mm-hmm. When you get a snake, I think it's important to you know, you're not you're not hurting it. You're being gentle with it, but you're manipulating it. And yeah, what, yeah. what it does is it it desensitizes the animal, and it, it kind of lets it. You're increasing its comfort zone, is what you're doing. You are definitely, which really helps because you're like, hey, you're inside, you're outside, you're on the playground, you're on the grass, you're on the slate, you're here, yeah. you're there, you're upside down. My fingers in your mouth. You know, she's not gonna bite. Yeah, yeah, nothing. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's great. But what else do you have in here? Because there's a couple of items in there that, that so are not in a normal so snake. Two that you haven't seen, and I'll show you. Um, so this one, obviously, you know. Now, she's obviously in blue, not at all shy. Yeah, this, no, this is so, what I wanted to ask about in case anyone online was wondering. what What's the deal with this? Well, I mean, I like having the rock in there because when they do start to shed, it gives them something to rub on. It's very so, abrasive. It's like a sandstone. It's like, yeah. I mean, it's just a rock from outside, but it's, it's something they can easily rub on and you know help them when they're shedding. Yeah. So I like the size hide spot you use too because it's like barely big enough for her to get in there, and mm-hmm. you know, and then yeah. it's it's half height between the floor and the ceiling, so she can kind of perch on it, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is one of the humidity box ones, so it has Wait. the sponges in the top. A humidity box. I actually haven't seen these. Who makes yeah. these? Uh, I forget the name of the company, but it's That's uh, pretty cheap. Yeah, so so all you do is uh, just I, I'm old school. I'm like cut a hole in a deli cup and put some moss in there But they actually have fixed sponges to the top. Yeah, no, there's actually sponges in here You've seen these before so these are the two carpets um, The male is definitely deep in shit now these this is this is there's a there's a trigger word in the reptile industry called cohabbing and people have been told that that's bad. Do those two live together full time? Those two live together full time. How do you pull that one? I've had them together ever since they were babies. Actually, normally, maybe they weren't when I just opened it this time, but normally they're curled up with each other. And you obviously do that so that you don't so, have to buy as many snake cages, right? Well, no, I mean, I have some empty ones in here, so, so I have extra room for them if I wanted to. But the thing is, um, I got these both when they were very young, obviously still very young, and my idea is, you know, these are the only two carpets that I'm gonna have, and I you know, wanna try to breed them eventually and so forth. I want them to be really used to each other, and I think you can house them together as long as you have multiple hides. So if they do want their own space, they can have their own area and so forth. But normally, they really actually just like being with each other. Yeah. So. I was being a little facetious. I think most people cohab because they have a cage and they want another snake and they don't want to buy another. Obviously, you have stacks of empty cages in there. Yeah, there's a bunch of empty ones. The one thing I've seen too, as far as privacy, now do you have heat across the back? There's heat on the left and the right on the back. Okay. So running up the sides. Another thing I've seen um, people do is actually put like a vertical divider right here through the heat zone. Yeah. And you know what's funny is like you think, okay, that way each one has its own heat and doesn't have to stress out or be next to the other one. But a lot of times they both go to the same side anyway. I don't really have an opinion on cohabbing. I know I'm supposed to hate it as a reptile person, but I just, I don't really follow the thing, same thing that other people do. My thing is like, obviously your snakes are healthy. They're super happy. You're learning from them. You know what I mean? If it works for you, how, who am I to say what you're doing that works doesn't work. That seems kind of silly. So, and, and I'm sure if you ever had any issues, you're always learning from them too, and you would correct it and be fine. Yeah, I mean, if I ever had any issues, I mean, if they ever had any issues being being together, I'd obviously separate them. But no, it's the complete opposite. They actually really seem to enjoy being together. Okay. So. Um, this is the... This is the first snake that I ever got. So this is a leucistic Texas rat. This is the snake I'm trying to recreate using super dwarfs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Blue eye leucistic or the cows. Mm-hmm. He's cutie. This is the first snake you ever got. It's the first one I ever All got. All right, so that brings me to the question, how long have you been keeping snakes? 
Uh, about two and a half years. She Re- stayed relative pretty, pretty small. <laughs> newbie, but I like, so, you know, what's kind of cool is, uh, you know, two and a half years is certainly a decent amount of experience with the number of the animals that you have and the variety too, because you've got colubrids, you've got, you know, several different species of pythons. But uh, I don't know about you guys. What do you think? I enjoy the fresh perspective sometimes. So if you guys want to know what's in each of these, uh, the one at the top here, this is a Super Dwarf 50% Kalatoa, 18% uh, Jampea, and this is a Purple Snow. The second one is a Annery Tiger Het Purple Snow, also Super Dwarf 50% Kalatoa and 18% Jampea. third one is a White Albino Super Dwarf 50% Kalatoa, and then the fourth one is a 50% Kalato Super Dwarf. Also, a female Super Tiger Annery Motley. That is all the retics that are in here. Below them are the two carpet pythons. They are both Exantic carpet pythons. Zebra Exantic and a Coastal regular Exantic. This is the Cystic Texas Rat Snake. And then the last one in here is always underneath the mulch. So we'll have to find her. True arboreal. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> boa. <laughs> Colombian boa. Skip down here to the bottom. This is not a retic. And this is in deep, deep shed. So normally this is pretty much the most colorful snake. <laughs> so, yeah. But, I don't um, think you've ever seen a Brazilian rainbow boa, have you? Not at all. Oh, they, they light up outside the iridescence on them and so forth. But, uh, yeah, she's definitely getting ready, or he's definitely getting ready to shed soon. And this is 100% super dwarf. Um, yeah, pure, well, yeah. so his mom was a wild caught Kalatoa. And his dad was from uh, the uh, Pro Reptiles line in Canada, which were some of the first Super Dwarfs ever imported. And it was, you know, they, when I talked to uh, Dan Yermovich up there, he said his importer said they were collected from around Kalatoa Island. But that doesn't mean it doesn't have a little Madu or Karampa in it. Yep. So pure Super Dwarf, um, but you know, we don't guess at localities. We just yeah. say what we are. So 50% Kalatoa for sure. And then it could be pure Kalatoa, but Mm-hmm. I, I don't I don't call it that because I don't want anyone breeding them into pure Kalatoa bloodlines if they're not sure and then that yep. living it. Mm-hmm. So cute little guy now, huh? <laughs> I, I, I like it. <laughs> super dark, super tiny. Well, I've got his. He's, su- up. he's super good too. He's like just totally mellow. Oh yeah. <laughs> it was like a curious, most oh. curious little. Here in the top, pull this guy out. This is a 50% Jampea, normal, with some extra hidden in him. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good way of putting it. <laughs> this is a 50% Kalatoa Sun Tiger. I did I really appreciate you coming out and uh, you know just sharing your expertise your animals your home and everything with us anytime yeah absolutely so you guys have a good weekend catch you next time